Hi, I want to talk today about the new way to help correct class 3 jaw patterns. Uh, young Olivia saw me uh, for a consultation at 9 and if you look at her teeth, she had a severe class 3 malocclusion that was related to a maxilla that was narrow and too far back, uh, a high palate uh, and a, a obvious tongue thrust, right? We used an expander, it was a bonded hyrax and so we widened and made room for the canines and you can see there's plenty of space for those to come through, right? As we're using a bonded hyrax, we then used reversible face mask therapy to bring the maxilla forward. But because I knew this was what's called a 3C, a 3C is where we have a combination of a large mandible that's growing vertically uh, and a narrow maxilla, just by together. So narrow maxilla, we dealt with a hyrax and a face mask. For the mandible, we use these things. These are called um, bollards. And you can see that these bollards are basically surgical plates with a little hook. And the child wears elastics from the hook here to the hook up here. And this is what we call a class three traction. But the force of the elastics is orthopedic, not orthodontic, because we're moving the bone. And her teeth are almost in contact. Her mandibles come back, her maxillas forward. It's a really good change in the, in the facial balance if we can show you where we started. See where we started, canines were impacted, right? Very narrow arch. Have a look now, those canines have changed eruption pathway and she's just lost her deciduous canine, so they'll drop in beautifully. There's the skeletal ankle place. You can see um, the earliest you can place them is when you have eruption of the canine. Uh, so that you're not going to affect that um, eruption pathway. So, you know, we wouldn't do this when kids still had deciduous teeth there. So this is the sort of time frame where we can see good root development of the canine and the bone uh, in between the canine region is enough. In the upper, you can see where they're placed. Now, Olivia is wearing uh, a retainer, which she's going to wear at home and at nights. Um, and that retainer is maintained by expansion until the canines come through. But the goal in treatment for Olivia, we've avoided extracting premolars, number one. Uh, we've minimized the need of orthognathic surgery on the jaw. We've given a better facial uh, balance, but most importantly, we've improved nasal airway. This young lady always used to have her mouth open, right, right now, um, and used to have her, her tongue in a forward position. Mm -hmm. So once we widened and improved the nasal airway, we, we taught Olivia how to do her exercises. Do you remember your exercises? Yeah. I had a stick and I yep. put it in my mouth yep. and Good. I ate with my tongue always um, like behind my teeth. Good, yeah. So what we taught her to do is with the tip of her tongue up um, the, in the spot, uh, we use the paddle pop technique. You can use both your thumbs effectively behind the upper incisors and to push to get that pre-maxilla forward. So it's multidisciplinary treatment. It's airway, it's orthopedic expansion and face mask. It's a minor surgical procedure with bollards. So I think this is a good example. She's been a, a good uh, patient. She's worn her elastic, she's worn her face mask. So if you have a good patient with compliance, quite minimal intervention can get you across the line. Okay, thanks very much for allowing us to look at your teeth. Great, perfect.